Hello, this is Pastor Jim Ponko with a midweek meditation for October 13th, uh, 2021. Let me read for you Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoners, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. For many years, I served a congregation that had the word abiding in its name. A lot of churches do. There's abiding hope and abiding peace and abiding grace and abiding love. Anyway, um, somebody came to me one time and said, what does abiding mean? And I had to I have to admit that my explanation was probably not the, the best. Uh, but I got to thinking about that question when I was preparing this particular message because one translation of that first phrase where it says, keep on loving each other, is uh, abide in love for one another. Abide. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about what it means to abide in in love for one another. I pray that it helps you to understand where we as Christians live and how we as Christians should live. Webster's Dictionary describes or defines the verb abide to mean to remain, to stay in a place. So to abide in love, first of all, it describes the fact that God's love stays in us and with us. We stay in God's love. Even when we forget about God or forget that God loves us, God still loves us. His love abides in us, over us, and we abide in His love. And that's a very powerful thought. Since the moment that you became a believer, God has always loved you. As Jeremiah the prophet puts it, God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. One of my seminary professors uh, talked about this idea of being in God's love, and he, he explained it this way. He said, we live in the sphere of God's love. It's as if there's this great bubble and it's filled with love, God's love, and we are inside of that bubble. It surrounds us everywhere we go. That bubble protects us because God in love sends his angels to watch over us, sends um, uh, other Christians to encourage us and to correct us when necessary. Um, that bubble leads us in the right direction. It's not like that bubble of love forces us this way or forces us that way, but the Bible says that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him. So his love leads us in the direction that is for our eternal good. That bubble also covers us. It covers us with forgiveness. As one passage says uh, in Galatians, all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. You are covered in that forgiveness. And that's what it means to abide in God's love for us. It stays with us. It stays around us. And we stay in God's love. But the fact that we live in this great bubble of God's love is amazing. It's amazing when you consider the fact that there are times when we don't even act like God's love is there at all. Or that we really don't need God's love. Sometimes I think we act as if God's love is suffocating us because it keeps us from doing the things that we want to do. And then one night we decide to go out with friends and we, it's almost like we're trying to break all ten of the commandments in one night. And there are other times when we question God's love, even though it's all around us. We question it because God doesn't give us what we want or, or maybe God takes something away from us or God allows trouble into our life and, and, and we resent it. We, we wonder if God really loves us or not. And then there are the times when we act as if God's love just isn't enough. We, we think that uh, it's not enough that God loves us and cares for us and watches over us and is guiding us. We, we want to do what we want to do and we're not going to be happy unless we do it. 
But Paul made an interesting statement about what happens when we act as if God doesn't love us, when we try to force our way out of that bubble of love. In his letter to the Romans, he wrote, will their lack, that is the the lack of faith of some people, will their lack of faith nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true and every man a liar. In other words, God's love is unfailing. He will abide with us. After all, from eternity, he chose us to be his own. At the birth of his son, he made sure that Jesus would keep God's law perfectly for our sake. And at Jesus' resurrection, God was assuring us that we are indeed not guilty. At our baptism, he assured us that we are his own children. And to this day, he surrounds us with his love and announces to us that we are forgiven for Jesus' sake. But now, this is the point that the writer of the Hebrews makes. Now that we abide in, that we live in this bubble of God's love, The writer to the Hebrews urges us to abide in loving each other as brothers. Now that we have experienced God's love for ourselves, God wants us to share that love with the world. And what's interesting to notice about who uh, the writer to the Hebrews says we should share love with is he doesn't specifically mention so much our friends, but strangers, those who are in prison, those who are mistreated. Someone once commented that we're more likely to show love to our enemies than show love to a stranger. And there's a reason for that. We we know our enemies and there's that old saying that sometimes it's wise to keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So we are kind sometimes to our enemies. Maybe sometimes we're more likely to be kind to them than to strangers. But God calls us to be kind and loving to strangers. Why? Well, one point can be made that at one time your spouse, your best friend, were strangers. There's an old saying that a stranger is really just a friend you haven't met yet. But the main reason that God wants us to reach out to strangers and to outsiders and to those who are in need is because there there was a time when we were all outsiders to God. We were alienated from God. We were hostile to Him. We were prisoners of our sin and and of Satan and mistreated by Him who had deceived us and manipulated us. Yet God came to us. He reached out in love to us. He made us members of His family. He put us in that sphere, in that bubble of His love. And now He wants us to bring others into that bubble. Maybe there is a stranger living right across the street from where you are right now. Maybe there's a stranger that you'll encounter at work or, or in, in a store. Or maybe, maybe there's somebody that you need to go and make a visit to. But because we are abiding in the love of God, God wants us to bring others into that love. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about our family, our friends, or strangers and outcasts. All of them are welcomed by God into His love. God wants us to abide in love for others so that others can come to know God's abiding love for them. Amen. Let's pray. O God of peace, I turn aside from an unquiet world, seeking rest for my spirit and light for my thoughts. I bring my work to be sanctified, my wounds to be healed, my sins to be forgiven, my hopes to be renewed. In you there is perfect harmony. Draw me to yourself and silence the discords of my wasteful life. Your greatness is beyond my highest praise. Take me out of the loneliness of self and fill me with the fullness of your peace. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen.